We're back on with the 10 and 0 against the very strong 1100s and see if we can get into the mindset of how they actually win these games. So we'll crack on and uh, push and block the pawn. Develop the knight. And the other knight. Am I putting my best foot forward here? Doesn't look too dangerous at the moment. They're moving pretty swiftly. Yes, almost robotic like. Could have actually hit the pawn in the center here. Let's hit the pawn in the center. Then they can take the pawn there, but they're not going to do that. Take. See what the bishop wants to do. We see what it wants to do again, or shall we just attack it with the bishop? Okay, lots of shifty movements going on, so let's see if we can get the white square bishop developed. So as you can see, they haven't done anything at the minute, but now they've seen the golden opportunity, which we look like we have given to them. Hmm. Going to take. Going to take. <clears throat> Excuse me. Going to attack. So, as I've mentioned before, I've never played 1100s in real life over the board who play like the 1100s um, here. And I think what we'll do is attack the knight. Bishop's got no protection. They're probably going to get that for free, actually, because <clears throat> they're going to have a check on our king. So I'd say in this situation, um, maybe we got too flowery with the opening and we weren't direct enough with simple direct moves. I think we danced a bit too much and didn't really get pieces off the board appropriately. Should have maintained pressure, should have just captured things simply rather than a low radar of attacks. So that's what's happened here. Yeah, so they've gone for that. I don't know why that took so long because we already knew that was happening. So oh, we can't take there. So we'll take this and they get our bishop for free. But they have to take here first. We can take with the rook to help support the bishop in a sense. But the long pause thing is a killer when you're playing against, well, my experience playing these 1100s yes we'll make mistakes but it's the way that they capitalize on the mistakes i've never seen anything like it playing 1100s playing the 1200s 1300s even the 1400s 1500s 1600s and the 1700s over the board i've never seen anything like it and um, the strength of the players here so they do take, um, so they're just gathering up materials, so we're just going to grab. Because their vision is just, it's unreal, it's uh, unprecedented. Let's attack the bishop. Uh, I 
I don't think we do that, do we? Because it's got two pieces on there already. Oops, what happened then? Take a pawn. It's on our rook. Just realized as I did that then. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, we're making blunders in there because we're kind of frazzled at the aspect of the strength of these um, 1100 players. We've messed up our. Um, <clears throat> the opening, it wasn't strong enough, it wasn't direct enough, and we allowed them to get better position without them actually even having to try. Now they've got this pawn here. I'm going to attack the rook. Take. So they get the pawn. So we have a bishop and a rook against two rooks. Mm, nothing doing really is there potentially come here but it's just going to bring this rook down and start hitting obviously it's taking the pawn not taking the pawn just yet he's feeling safe that this pawn is going to fall at some stage could go and protect it or we could push the pawn up and up we push it there bishop comes to protect but it's a bit flimsy because it's in front of our our rook but we'd be able to defend by attacking something like that let's go like that but they'll realize they can come here Bishop is protecting the pawn at the minute. So it's moved itself out of that attack. Because it wants the rook to come here. Let's do this. Can hide the bishop here, it's just that this pawn is going to be able to come and attack it at some point. We can go and attack the pawn. Puts checks on us. Yep, which they have done. Long pause is a killer. We're attacking the bishop. Bishop's got no protection at the minute. So we can, if we bring the bishop here, we're blocking the rook from actually taking. So we can attack the rook. Just comes behind. It's just chasing the bishop around all over the place. Which is a shame. But this is the type of thing I'm talking about where 1100s over the board in real life. It's not... And it's not saying I'm any great shakes, I'm not being big headed or anything like that. Is that if I'm playing an 1100 over the board, there's no way made, we probably we wouldn't even get to this stage really. They wouldn't be finding the stronger moves in a sense, Do you know. Um, it would be slightly imbalanced in the majority of the games, and it's just it's just a fact, you know. So we can bring the bishop here attacking the rook, but then he can come and x-ray through. And that's probably what they're hoping on. If we did come here, his pawn can come down, then he's exchanging the rooks off. And again, same sort of situation, isn't it? We come here. Attacks the bishop. Oh, there's some convoluted way of them attacking this pawn. 
would come here with the bishop block blocking, allowing us to take the pawn. They come around here and attack. So we come down, but then obviously this pawn probably comes down to hit it. Maybe the rook takes it then. There might be a bit of pressure potentially doing that. Bring the bishop here. See what magic they've got. So the rook does go straight up attacking the pawn. Attacking the bishop as well. Take. There might be something if we went like this and then the king goes here. Then we go here, x-ray and through to the rook. Get the rook off, it's just that it has a poor majority. So would that be worth our while? I don't know, I don't think it will really. It's moved off of there, it's attacking our rook. So like we said, we can go here with the check, but his king can come here, but now we can't do that. In what world does like an 1100 over the board reel see this type of manoeuvre? They just don't. Right, so we can come up and attack the pawn. Pawn can move and it's a passer, so it's going to be shooting down. So if we put the check on the king, he has to move, moves, then we can start pushing the pawn up. The rook's waiting to go behind. Put the check. Nothing much else to do. Push. Rook comes behind. It's the subtle nature. I'm sure I'm not on my own in this thinking at all in any way, shape. I'm sure I'm not. I've seen many other um, people practicing their chess, doing their streaming on, and they do find some difficulties. Now he's got two up. Ooh, but that's an interesting situation. Thought the bishop had something then, I thought it had this attack in their rook, but the rook takes the pawn, and we would have to take the rook. Well, we don't have to, but... And also, if they do take, that rook is no longer here, so this bishop can put the check on, but he can just drop. Hmm... Can bring the bishop here defending the pawn. It's a bit defense nanny, bit defense nanny, isn't it? Let's bring the bishop here and defend the pawn. They'll find a way of trying to get the rooks doubled again on here. Oh, he's got the passer, don't forget. So the rook can move. They're looking to trade the rooks off, if you like, for the bishop. Could move the rook here, attacking the pawn, the king comes to defend, then come behind the pawn. Okay, we'll attack to find a better position. Was I talking about some? Yeah, I'm sure I'm not the only one that see, thinks this, you know. It, 1100s over the board do not play like these play. It's really, uh, really annoying. Because they just don't. Let's bring the rook here behind the pawn. And their king is still on a dark square. So we can push, but we'll lose the rook. Push. Maybe, is that a good position, Stother? No point doing this, because his rook just puts a check on our king. And we come here. And he keeps putting a check on the king. Come here. Trying to get this bishop here. Hmm. 
Maybe that's something to consider. Let's do it. Put the check. Come further down. Oh, if we could get the king here, it's just that he's got space to put the check on. Can take the pawn with a check. Yeah, he's getting away. Just wish the king was there. Would have been a lovely mate, but would oh, what's the, he's getting. Getting me. Oh, ain't that annoying? It's getting me. I go here, he comes down with the check. I go down, comes down with the check. Go up, go up, comes down with the check. Oh, this is not going to be good. Time is running out. Mm, am I missing something? No. Yeah, it comes down with a check. I'm not going to get away with it, am I? I am not. Nope. 19 seconds. Check, checkmate. Down. Oops, excuse me. Down. Down. Chases, chases, chases. It's not doing that. Goes there. Escapes. That's a bit unlucky, is that? It's a bit unlucky. But it's not good for us. Got the checks on me. Going to survive the checks on me. Yeah, it's getting them in position. One, two. Oh, it's not doing that just yet. Why not? Oh, time's up. But that shows the difficulty of playing 1100 online. Yep. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just very difficult. It might be, well, this in this opening here, I don't believe I was dynamic enough. And... It wasn't my usual type of opening per se again, yet again. So it's always when I'm not doing my usual type opening where I find a bit of an issue and a problem. But if I play over the board for real, there's no way made that an 1100 can still do what they do to me here. Especially like in this game here, the, the positions that they're finding is way too clinical way too clean, way too precise, even for an 1100. We'll go on to the next one. So this is the perspectives of the opponent. We're looking at how, you know, how strong these opponents really are in terms of their playability trying to find out how it is that they win these games, gain advantages in the games. All right, so he's attacking the pawn here. And again, pretty samey, samey type opening. So I think we'll go here, just push through the center. Already you can see I've not developed my pieces as I would do normally. And I think it's cause when I do my early narrative narration in the game, it breaks the mold of what I'm trying to do. So I'm just subconsciously making moves. This rook move here, I mean, that's like, you know, like not bonk cloud, but it's like, well, what is that move? Yeah, what is it doing? So suppose it's supporting the pawn here, but it's very unusual, isn't it? It doesn't really make any sense. So I'm going to bring the bishop here and just see if I can take pieces off the board. Let's go for the simple direct maneuvers to get pieces off the ball strategically. And just try not to be too arty and over complicating the, the actual game. Let's castle, king safety. 
Because at the minute the opponent's just sitting back, waiting. Obviously, maybe the bishop's coming here to x-ray through, but it's not doing. Simple moves. They've actually hit the head of the snake. Does it improve their position? It's almost like lazy chess in a sense, just sitting back waiting. Their bishop's going to have the diagonal coming across here. This pawn's got no other protection really on it. Could develop a piece by attacking their queen. Before we do any of that, so it's getting a piece off the back appropriately. Allows the queen to come here, it's supporting this pawn. We can now take, or we can develop the knight. Developing the knight doesn't look like it's doing much. Queen could come out, but the bishops there could come here. Again, doesn't look like it's doing much, but I suppose it's supporting if the pawn does take. Don't think it's going to take, I think it's going to drop, but it does lock their own bishop. I do think I'm going to take now, at this point. After all of that conversation, Queen can sit in the centre here, it's just the Knight can come in but the Bishop can take it. It's not going there because the Bishop is there. Alright, so let's see what else we can do. Shall we get this Knight out? Where is it wanting to go really? Doesn't look too functional, this Pawn's got no protection, the Queen's probably going to attack it. Maybe to bring the queen up a little bit just to support the pawn. Maybe bring it here. Let's bring it here. Don't overthink it. It's opposite the king. And then get the knight out. Just looks like the knight's just doing nothing coming out here. Let's bring the knight out. This bishop's going to be getting hit at some point, and we're going to simple take pieces off the board. No airs and graces, just keeping it real dirt simple. Okay, so what's the next movement? This bishop is attacking this pawn. So we just move the pawn out of the way, or push this pawn up. This pawn's going to be meeting it. I think we'll just push this pawn out of the way of the attacks. Bishop's hungry for a round here. So looking at the lay of the land, a bit like the previous game in a sense, the opponent didn't really do much. We just gave them a better position. We didn't really, we weren't dynamic enough. We didn't take things off the board. It looked a bit arty. So now they're pushing, hitting the head of our snakes. Looking to disrupt, maybe the rook aiming to come for this pawn after they take take. This does have a free pawn here. And he will be taken with the bishop if we don't take. So he's going to be taking the pawn either way with his bishop. So we can take one. They take back. We don't have to do that, but then we're going to lose this pawn anyway. So we could take this in the meantime and then swing across, put a check on the king, but the bishop's going to get in the way. We can push to block that attack in a sense. I'm going to push this pawn first. Takes, we take. Still have access to this pawn at the minute, so we're not rushing that. So as you can see, we're not do doing the queen grabbing a pawn situation to lose tempo it's not saying it's improving anything but we want to feel better about not taking the easy road or a bad position so they've moved that pawn so we can take this pawn just to just keep it simple queen's through so now this, got, this pawn is going because the bishop is on it. And we need to probably bring the rook here, which means this rook pawn is going to be going. Because the rook is going to come down, but the knight is currently protecting that square. But the bishop is there. 
and they moved there dead quick didn't they so we could go there tuck in the queen take the bishop off the board let's do a preempt on that one so as you can see the opponent really isn't doing anything special it's us more well probably more times out of 10 we give them the opportunities it's just an 1100 over the board would not generally see the opportunities to take advantage of any weaknesses that you kind of have on the board and the way that these do online take advantage of any type of slightest weaknesses is really quite astounding and they don't you don't that it doesn't happen over the board in real life 1100s don't see those types of opportunities and squish you and and it just doesn't happen so it's far from real in terms of the viability of these levels that we're playing against these 1100s here we're attacking the queen sorry probably sending it to a golden opportunity somewhere still keeping tabs on this pawn here so we could attack this um, rook very conscious that this rook is looking to fly down here and get these pawns that type of thing but we're going to hit this rook and this is us trying to keep it as simple as possible the early part of the opening was narration mode again so it really wasn't the position of the pieces wasn't the ideal way that we would normally go so we need to work on that and maybe not do innovation mode at the beginning of the game wait until the game gets warmed up so if we take his rook replicates so we don't need to worry about that the queen doesn't have any protection it's just that this bishop can come here I'm thinking of the knight coming here So if the pawn did take, then the queen would take their queen, but the bishop is there. Bishop takes, pawn takes. Where's the knight really looking to go? I mean, it can come here, but it doesn't have an out after that, really. It's hitting this twice, but the queen is protecting. Jumps here. Jumps here here so it's got jump ability so I'm actually going to go with that at which point they're probably just going to take the rook and have enough of that yep like I said I've had enough so they've moved dead quick, but they're actually protecting their pawn with their pieces, which looks a bit odd. So if we bring the knight here, attacking the queen. When they move fast, you have to get a bit worried. Where's the queen going? He's protecting the queen because he's thinking, yeah, if he does, does take, then obviously. So things have changed now. Let's attack the queen this way. Rook's got no protection. Better stop clicking on pieces. The amount of games that I've been clicking on pieces, doing arrows, or just sitting waiting, and then it's done like a preemptive move when I've lost the piece is absolutely quite crazy. Okay, Queen's come off the line. What's it looking for? It's on a white square. What we're we looking for? <clears throat> looking for a bit of disturbance. Obviously, this would have been nice, but it's not happening now. We can still attack their rook. But there must be some other plan that we've got in. He's got a white square bishop. Could push this pawn just supporting the knight. We need to make some space for the king or else we're going to be suffering the wrath of a back rank mate. Three minutes left. Plus this bishop's on this pawn as well. Where's he thinking of going here? 
or trying to get round here. Oh, I think he's probably coming down here to attack the rook. I think they're coming down to attack the rook, people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what do we do? Let's bring the king across for now. But we're on two minutes. Yes, they have done as well. They're still continuing the attack. Maybe they they've got a two on one, haven't they? Yeah. So we could just attack the queen. Where's he going? I'm a bit ham sorting and missing something here. Let's attack the queen. My time is running out. I'm actually in bullet mode now. Ah, the dance, the dance, the dance. Coming for the pawn. Coming for the pawn. Go here, but we don't have much time. These crucial stages are where they come out. Keep mentioning it. Come out and find the magical moves. 1100s. Like I say, playing over the board, do not find magical moves in any way, shape. It's trying to come round the back here. Put a check on here. <laughs> what did I say? Where to find the magical moves? <laughs> ah, dear me. I shall have to give up playing this game of chess, you know. I think we'll push this one because give the bishop a bit of fun. Oh, isn't that sickening? He's actually got the pawn as well. Look at them with the magical moves. Wow. Wow. That's really quite sad, really. <laughs> 1100s do not play like this. They really don't. Oh my god. And look at them just not even going for the taking the pawn or anything. This is so bad. Let's go here. 14 seconds left. <laughs> oh dear. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Because playing 1100s over the board, I wouldn't have to put full concentration in either. Like, you know, I would be able to rely on sub my subconscious type thinking. I'm saying this because that's the facts. And when I'm online, I'm having to <laughs> just 
think, well, what what magical move are they going to come out with? It's absolutely shocking. <laughs> oh my life! What a what a life! What a life! It's got a white square bishop. It's coming for this pawn, trying to disturb something. White square bishop's coming into life. Let's just make a move. Oops, ah, can't move. Well, they know I can't do anything in five seconds, so they'll just do silly moves now. They've done enough. What's this? Yeah. We're going to jump into the next game. It's going to be a very long session, but um, we're dealing with the opponent's perspective. We're looking at the harsh reality of what we are facing, what I face as I'm trying to practice my chess. So long as I realize that, I feel that I can take away, I'm going to flip it on its head and say, I can take away from these experiences, these training sessions that I'm having here with the opponent's perspective. And even if it's not looking at the opponent's perspective and I'm just playing around, I now fully understand what it is that I'm playing against. Yeah, I'm not playing against a number. I'm playing against strong maneuvers. No matter who it is, the odd one or two that you'll fly through and you go, ah, yes, that was fairly smooth. You know what I mean? I got my act together in that one. Majority of the games are going to be really tough, really strong. You're not really playing the number that you think you're playing. So that's why you have to take it with a pinch of salt, really come in there and say, well, how can I try and better that position? If I'm going to lose on time, lose on time. But maybe try not to get checkmated or whatever it is and just try and improve the position as you're going. A little bit like even in this game here, we try to improve our position a little bit as we're going. So I don't feel too bad about the actual game in the grand scheme of things because as you can see it's showing 1.3 so it's an advantage for us not a disadvantage maybe start thinking a little bit quicker but for now i'm in long play mode thinking because there's tournaments coming up that i'm playing over the board and this will help with me looking at the reality of the opponent's perspective in this 1100 area, the 1200 area going forward, etc. Okay, let's jump into the next one. See what we've got in store for this. So the expectation of winning goes out of the window. The expectation of trying to understand the perspective of the strength of play that we're playing against. That's what we're looking at. And we said we're going to stop narration mode at the opening stage. So that we can at least feel comfortable with the opening. We can take the poison palm. We can take there. I think we'll just go steady Eddie. Let them push here so they've got advanced pawns. Oh, it's going for the 20 pointer. 20 pointer being the queen taking. Yep, and we don't mind that. Okay, so let's bring the bishop here. Excellent. So they're moving fast now because they're wanting to try and squish the king. So if we go like this with our king here and then try and maybe just virtual castle it into this little square, we should be feeling a little bit happy. Bring the rook here. So it's playing defense nanny at the moment. Or we could double the pawns in the center. We could bring this bishop here attacking. And then get the pawn in the center. I don't really see a problem with that because it is centralized, even though it is doubled, but it is managing some nice squares. 
So that's a plus for us. Uh, so I'm going to treat that as a plus for us. Then they do take. So they're playing real quick, like I said, because they're wanting to try and squish the king as early as possible. But if we take our time, maybe we can enjoy savouring the bad position that we're getting, but trying to make it into a good position. So I'm fairly confident that we are weathering the storm. It's attacking the pawn here. The bishop can come and protect. And this can just take this here if he does take. Because it's only supporting the knight at the minute. So we will bring the bishop here. We could also develop the knight as well. Just to the, um, support the pawn. And it gets another piece off the back. It's just that the knight is kind of... Hmm... Get to bring the rook across, but we are supporting it. I think the bishop feels better here. For some strange reason. Because does the knight want to come out if it's allowed? Bishop, knight, bishop, knight, bishop, knight, bishop, knight. Let's go with the knight. Let's go with the knight. Doubling up, so let's get this rook supporting the knight. The moving dead quick, like quick and dirty tactics, and um, also when they move that quick sometimes and they're not thinking about it, it's because the magical mystery world systems are in play. But now they've slowed down to make it look like they're thinking, but that was a pretty obvious maneuver they're going to make. So I think then they're going to take. Because this knight is supporting. This knight is supporting. So there's many things that can happen here at this moment in time. Let's have a look. We could move the knight out of the way. But it is supporting this pawn at the minute. Could bring the knight here. But this bishop is not being supported. So once this knight disappears suppose we could take, but then he's going to be taking with this here. Mm-hmm. Takes. Take. It's got two pieces on here. We've got two pieces protecting at the minute. Then the knight comes in and takes. Might not need to worry about anything, so let's go with attacking the bishop. And see how it. Yep, yeah, okay, and let's attack the bishop again. Smaller piece. And then see what the knight actually wants to do. He's got loads of pieces on here now, so I thought he would have taken actually. I genuinely thought they were going to take that. Right, so. We still can't move because the bishop's on this pawn. Is there a way in? Let me think, let me think. Anything else? Time's running out. Can't bring the bishop here because he's got two pieces on there. It's only the king protecting. It's got to be some type of magical manoeuvre. Ooh, the knight could attack the bishop. Bishop's going nowhere, so it either sacrifices, but we've got enough pieces protecting here if we have to take the bishop. This knight looks very dangerous. So I think we're going to... Oh, he has gone for it as well. And it's made space for his bishop as well. Can't take. So defending... And then the bishop puts a two or more. Eee. Oh, he's also got a two or more on this pawn as well. He's done a reversal. Okay, let's move the rook. See how it pans out. Yeah, he's going for that. But we still do have the two there. Let's take... When I say the two... Two pieces defending the rook as he's looking at this. But if he takes. Oh, and he's going for it. 
So if we did attack, then his um, bishop can his ruler, his knight can take. Oh no, he's got the knight for free. Hold on. Oh yeah, that's a bad combination. We can't take. We take. He gets the bishop. Or the knight. He gets the. He gets any of them for free. So we take, he's got one, two, we've currently got three minor pieces there, so he's got a choice between some. So we'll grab, so he's got a choice between the two, and that evens it out, doesn't it? So then it's two each, two minor pieces each, and maybe he's got a pawn or something up, has he? I think he has got a pawn. He takes takes, we take with a check on the king. Probably best taking the bishop, isn't it? Because the bishop looks like it's gonna have a bit of power. Doesn't do that, so we'll go here like this, and then we can x-ray through to his Ooh. Yeah, they saw that, didn't they? They saw that. I was gonna x-ray through to both the knights. So we can still hit the knight, or in fact we can come this way and we'll be hitting this pawn. But he can do the Fisher Spassky and drop down. And his knight's there, if we went there we can't take this pawn, his king could mostly on and get the bishop. Okay, right, so the knight can come here attacking the pawn. Obviously it drops. not much doing there really is there comes and attacks the king king comes here right bounces around nothing clear here where's sending the knights oh he's going to take the pawn silly me he's going to take the pawn so we won't get that so we have to come here to defend the pawn to talk, we're attacking their pawn, but then he attacks our bishop. Oh dear, attacks the bishop. We come to this position, he's got a bit of a fork. Oh, that, that'll hurt, so let's not do that one. Yep, yeah, so that's what they'll do here. Expecting we go here, then he drops because the knight's supporting. Not doing that just yet, so we'll take the pawn. Maybe does it now? Nope. Oh, he gets the pawn. Got two pieces on there. Got a check on the king. He's got our pawn. Put a check on the king. Have we got a four? Oh, we got the pawn. Take, get to safety, move, move, move. We could go here, excuse me. But what is it really doing? Go here, then he moves here, then we're not going here. It's kind of trapped in a way, it's no good. Come back, that attack there, let's come here. Let's bring the knight back. It's got pawn majority over here though, look at the state on that. Yeah, he's going to be hitting the bishop. So we have to hit the knight first. So we'll be taking it. But now he's just going to swing here and attack the pawn. Oh, he's not doing that. So shall we just get this knight off the board then? But they just want us to do that because they've got a pawn majority on this side. We're going to struggle. We are going to struggle. Take it. Time's running out. Push. He just pushes down with his pawn. Intricate. 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 Hmm. I'm going to be hitting the bishop anyway, dude. So he may as well move.
we'd be taking these knights off. They're going to cause us trouble, aren't they? And yet again, 1100 most definitely don't play like this at all, in any way, shape. Not on your life. This is way too intricate. It might not feel like it's intricate to, you know, anyone else, but it, it really is. It's too delicate um, an operation. And it's not dumbing down the skills of the 1100s that I've played. Um, it's just a reality check. I mean, look at the dancing knight coming here. It's just... It's just unreal. It's too clean. Too clean and pure. Yeah.
Yeah. No way made an 1100 would play like that over the board. Wants a rematch. Don't think so. Come back like a super, super grandmaster. Okay, on to the next one. So as you can see, we're not concentrating on trying to climb any fancy rating ladders or anything like that. We are looking at the reality of playing strength, strongness, or perceived strongness from the opponent. So we won't do narration mode until we've opened up and we're happy and put our best foot forward as far as we're concerned. Okay, so we've opened, we're now sort of trying to transition from the mid into the end game. So we've tried to put our best foot forward as far as we're concerned. Doesn't mean it's winning, but at least we're comfortable that we've opened without doing the narration mode and breaking our concentration and making um, kind of silly mistakes. But it doesn't mean we're winning anything just because we've done that. So now we're looking at the perspective of the opponent. This is what these whole exercises are about within this 1100 area. Is, well, how do they actually gain advantages in these games? So we are attacking this pawn, but it is defended twice. We do have this, but it is defended. Obviously, we're not going to be taking. It's just the potential for taking. We do have the queen coming here and potentially attacking the bishop with a check on the king might be a bit of a waste of movement bring the rook across opposite to the queen maybe supporting the pawn with this rook let's bring this rook here just on the principle that it is opposite the queen that's all really so the bishop moved out dead quick there no fault whatsoever so that is a bit concerning when the move dead quick and there's no fault being put in. It does make me think they're not thinking. Or they're not thinking and they don't have to think. So we do have the rook and the queen on this pawn if we do move the knight out of the way. Knight's got no protection here. Does have protection here. Does manage a bit of a better square here. Just that this pawn will drop if we do take, take, then the bishop can take and then it's going to be on here. So the queen's moved attacking the unprotected knight. We did say it wasn't protected, didn't we? And now it's also looking at maybe doing this with this. So if we go rushing to take, they take the knight. And we don't, we don't have any... Do have the bishop attacking here, but that's not much. So they move there dead quick. So this is what I'm saying, that when they move quick and they're not putting any thought into it, but yet they're finding good positions, that's where I'm thinking. They're not thinking. It's not, they're not thinking. It's not them, which is very strange. This is one of those where they got put into a difficult situation. They had the moment to pause and think, and then suddenly um, coming out with, the stronger moves so we're not comfortable in that kind of atmosphere 
not comfortable at all. So do we come back with the knight? Back in the pawn, which is protected by their knight. Just to bring it back to some safety. Bishop's chomping at the bit to get through. Do we just support the knight? Could just support the knight. Time is ticking down. Could just support the knight. Takes there. Queen comes. Rook comes and attacks the queen. I think we're just moving the knight back again. Yeah, look at the speed, um, looking at the timings of their moves. Look how quickly they're moving. There's no real thought being put into them. This time, bring it around this way. So then at least it is protected. We still have the options of this, but obviously the rook is going to come and protect at this point. Look how quickly they're moving. It's only taking a few seconds and so where's it going with the queen? It's attacking the pawn. So it is giving us this pawn, but then we are going to be taking the bishop. We're going to take the pawn now. If he takes, thinking he's getting the bishop, but the knight's protecting now doesn't have a dark square bishop to cause us problems. The rook's defending the bishop. But we can now come and attack the queen. Doesn't have to exchange, probably just goes all the way back just to dance. Is there anything better? No, not at this moment. Let's attack the queen and see if this we're getting them off the board. No, nope. no exchanges. All right, so we can keep on chasing the queen. I'm trying to see if we can improve the position on the board. Or does the rook come up and attack the bishop? Oh, but then the bishop does that. It's x-raying through to the queen, so let's not do that. Let's not do that. Does the bishop attack the pawn, attack the queen? Smaller piece attacking a higher piece. Our time is running down. They're moving so quick though. They're not. Look at that. Look, it's just, it's really annoying. You see them move that fast. There's no way made they're thinking. Now. No, we still can't do it. Well, we can. But his queen comes down and attacks the pawn. Yeah, attacks the pawn. Let's just do this before we think about doing that.
So we're going to go on to the next one in this mammoth look at the opponent's perspective. So we won't do narration in the opening. Just so we can find our best feet forward. Whoa. Sensitive mouse. Okay, right, so we've done the opening bit. Now we're looking to transition into the mid end game. It's not over. Oh, we have to be very careful. Although the rook doesn't have any support, so we didn't need to panic too much. At this moment, it feels like we've got a good start, but now how do they develop to make it a bad start for us? We could bring the knight here, attacking the rook now that the bishop is not there. Could have done it anyway, because the rook's supporting. We're attacking this pawn, so you probably expect the queen to go back, which is not really what it wants to do. But how do they find these magical maneuvers? It's um, maybe this player's not going to. You never know. But when you play the game like the last game, you can come away a little bit scarred. I think the rook will be attacking the queen because it's saying, okay, well, if you're going to take here, we'll take your queen off the board. So it's given us something to think about. We probably need to start positioning. Maybe here or maybe here. Oh no, it's gone all the way back. Didn't really want to do that, did it? Right, it's okay. So we could attack the knight. It's just this rook is going to be hitting our queen. So as we said, we may as well get this queen off of this line of attack. Could bring it here, but I'm trying to avoid the knight being able to put a check on it. Which means just bringing it here, but again, it can still put a check on it. So I'm aware, no matter where the queen's going, apart from here, but then it gets hit by the pawn. Then we come down, it still can put checks on it, although the rook can protect, but there. This, then it can't put any checks on it at all. Gives the bishop some play. Okay, let's go here. 
just avoiding any checks on the queen. See if we can get the bishop out. Maybe to here. So now I'm thinking, am I now giving them the strength back now with these maneuvers? Because the queen wasn't under threat and we've moved the queen. And it has moved the knight, so it was going to be moving it anyway. So it's attacking the bishop, the knight, sorry. We could hit the knight, it just sends it back again. But it's going to be attacking the queen. So it's looking to attack the queen anyway. So we could push the pawn here. It looks like we're playing a bit of defense nanny. Get the bishop off the back. Then he's got a fork. Yeah, it's, yeah, little tiny things like that. Hmm. Right, what can we do? Bishop maybe here, but then obviously the bishop just takes the knight. Can't bring this here. So my bishop's going to be stuck on the back. It's almost like they've thought of that and done that on purpose. Oh, oh. what? Oh, I'm gonna cry. That's a mouse slip. Oh, and they've not taken advantage of it, which is a shame. Mouse slip, missing the back. I thought I'd taken the click off, but it just it just dragged it over. Sensitive mouse. I'm gonna have to change this mouse. It's causing me some serious problems. <clears throat> not impressed with that. So bring the knight here, bring the knight here. Yeah, they could have just taken the knight off the board then. I'm surprised they've let that go. Okay, let's do this. Right, no messing with the mouse now. Crikey. Let's open back up now. I'm going to attack the bishop. There we may. Yeah, so there's the element of human error as well. We've always mentioned that. It's attacking our queen. Oh. So I move the queen here. They're always constantly looking to attack the queen. So we could move the queen here, or we can attack their queen. It just drops the pawn, though, so we're constantly having to think. Just move the queen out of the way. Bearing in mind, he, he probably needs to take the bishop or move the bishop because. We will be able to take the bishop for free. Stop clicking, dude. This mouse is not your friend. Yeah, so he does take. Queen can take. We're going to be on the knight. But he's constantly hunting the queen. the rook can take so he just goes back somewhere take not quite seeing stuff oh there it is <laughs> there it is it goes back there i thought we had it trapped So before I start monologuing, it looks like we have a minor piece up. How does that work? Did they give us something earlier on? So they've gone back, just looking a little bit because one, two. What did they sacrifice? Oh, the knight. It was the knight. Sorry. Yeah. 
What's the early nights? Right, okay. Don't move so slow, dude. I'm gonna just lose on time. Again, need to move the queen out of the way. Maybe put some pressure on this pawn with a two on one. Oh, now they're starting to move fast. So attack the queen. Knight supporting. Oh, stop clicking. Oh, I'm doing whatever. Oh, the queen dance again. Yeah, I'm going to hit the queen. It's amazing how many don't want to give up the queen. I hear a click then. I thought I heard a click and nothing had moved. Yeah, it's amazing how many don't give up the queen. All this dancing. So if we take the pawn with the idea of coming here with the queen, what's his queen doing? Don't know if any of that's fast enough. Knight comes across. So going here with the potential of coming here, we don't actually need to do that because we're actually opposite their king. That should be checkmate. So in, in essence, understanding what you would expect to see it's like ordering an an orange from the fruit market yeah and then when it turns up it's not necessarily an orange it's it's an apple you're looking at it and you go well i ordered an orange it looks like an apple and then you bite into it and oh well you peel it because you think it's an orange you peel it and inside it's an apple that's the same with this here I'm looking at these 1100 games that I'm playing, these numbers that are at the side of these players. I'm going, well, I kind of ordered an 1100, um, but what I'm getting is like a 1600 or 1700, you know? So it doesn't taste right, does it? But as I said before, you have to experience it that for yourself to understand what you would expect from different playing levels. And as you're developing, you're looking at the standard of play that you want to see. You order an orange, you want an orange, you don't want an apple.